If you'd like online business explained to you in a way that you can actually understand, go to latenightim.com forward slash explain. It's completely free and I made it just for you. Now, how about an episode? Episode 118. Late Night Internet Marketing. This week on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast, I'm going to share with you the low-cost, simple, straightforward, and easy-to-understand strategy that you can use to get more organic search engine traffic to your website starting today. All this and more on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. The Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. You've been working for somebody else, but you want a business to run yourself. You want to know how to start, where to begin. Can you get out your comfort zone, my friend? Yes, you can do it right when it's late at night. Now, broadcasting late at night from a little studio in the big state of Texas, your host, your host, Mark Mason. Hey, I hope everyone is having an absolutely fantastic holiday season. No matter where you are in the world, what your religious orientation is, whether you have one or not, you gotta love the Christmas season. It's pretty lights, it's happy feelings, it's groovy Christmas music, it's all good. And I've been doing some shopping and just really getting into the holiday spirit. I have some small children in my house. They are very excited, not just about Santa Claus, but about the whole Christmas scene. You know, we do the Christian church thing and we celebrate the birth of Jesus and they're into that and it's just, it's cool, man. I mean... We, it's a, it's a great time for our family. We, we love it. And, uh, I have a six year old who gets up every morning and goes and tries to figure out where the shelf elf is. You know, if you don't, if you're not familiar with the shelf elf, we have this elf that comes down from the North pole every night and hangs out in the house all day long. And then at night goes back to the North pole. So yeah, we got all that going on in the Mason household and we're, we're truly digging it. And I'm excited to bring you this episode about search engine traffic optimization, an easy strategy that you can use. But before we get to that, let's do a little listener feedback. And now, and now it's time to hear what listeners just like you are thinking. Late night listener, listener feedback. 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 So I was hanging out on the Twitter as I often do. And uh, I oftentimes will ask people, what is your biggest internet marketing struggle. I'll throw that out there. You know, what's going on? And I do that for two reasons. One is sometimes I can help you with your biggest internet marketing struggle. And other times it just helps me keep a pulse on what's going on out there on the internet and with people who are trying to to make a go of it on the internet. So I put this tweet out there and I'm like, okay, you know, let me know what your biggest struggle is. And I get this response back from from Ivan, Ivan Raiklin. Now, a lot of you probably know Ivan. If you've been to conferences lately, you've seen him. All you have to do is stand around, and Ivan's one of those guys who will seek you out and introduce himself. I once heard Ivan say that his goal was to actually meet everyone on the planet. He's kind of an amazing guy, this a total aside, I really want you to meet Ivan sometime. He's a a former uh, U.S. Army Green Beret, a diplomat, a lawyer. He's an angel investor. The guy's everywhere, okay? He's really, really an interesting guy. And I think, if I'm remembering, I had dinner with him at Social Media Marketing World, him and uh, Michael Stelzner and Cliff and a bunch of guys and I, I, I want to say that Ivan even ran an ultra marathon. Okay, so he's, I'm just trying to paint this picture from for you because Ivan's answer just cracked me up on several levels. His answer was he has trouble 
hiring extremely motivated and passionate people that are self-starters. Okay. So when the, when the green beret ultra marathon running lawyer diplomat tells you that you're not motivated enough, I don't know what to do with that. Right. I mean, I mean, I don't know what, where the bar is for Ivan, but I I'm scared. Okay. I'm very scared. And now the flip of that is of course, uh, I'm sure Ivan has very reasonable expectations for his employees, but the flip of it is, I do see a lot of this entitlement mentality in it, and it freaks me out. Um, you know, I'm kind of old school. I'm older than the a lot of these millennials and the you know the internet set, right? The the young people that are that are trying to make a go of a, a living online. They're looking for lifestyle design. You know, they're doing that kind of thing, and that's super cool. I totally dig it. But what I see sometimes, and not with everyone, right? But what I see sometimes is this entitlement mentality. It's like, I just want success now, and I don't really want to wait. I'm ready now. I've I've got my six months of experience, and now I'm ready for the big time. And I see some of this in corporate America, too, and we work very hard to sort of ferret that out in the interview processes that we have in place in my corporate job. And I can imagine Ivan seeing these people who after, you know, three or four weeks, they want to know why they're not enjoying the same success as Pat Flynn. After all, his success was overnight, right? Not, I mean, not at all, but it seems that way from the outside looking in. And so I'm sure Ivan's running into that. So my advice to you based on that short conversation with Ivan is, you know, you got to be realistic about where you're headed, what you're doing and what the dues are. And I think there's a nice balance that you can strike between being aggressive and ambitious and having very high expectations for yourself and being a little impatient and wanting more as soon as you can get it. But being willing to do the work and respecting the fact that you've got to earn things in life and so forth. There's, there's this nice balance. And I think you have to, like a lot of things in life, you have to strive to find that balance. And and if you want to work for Ivan, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, you got to be a lawyer, diplomat, ultra marathon runner, if you're going to make it happen. This week, I also got another piece of feedback from Phil Zito on a totally different topic I mentioned that I'm considering doing Facebook Live and uh, I might use OBS Studio or Telestream to do this, trying to gauge what the interest would be, recognizing that Facebook Live is increasingly important in internet marketing. And I don't want to miss that opportunity if it's a way that I can reach people and help them. And, And Phil says he's got some experience with Facebook Live and he finds it difficult to do the interaction in part because there's such a big streaming live streaming delay on Facebook live. And I've noticed this Phil was wondering if it's his equipment, if he's running at too high a bandwidth, you know, uh, for video, should he be running at something less than 1080 and so forth. And, And those are a lot of questions that are super technical about live streaming that are better directed at someone like, uh, Luria Petrucci. Maybe we'll get her on here and have her talk about what's going on. I'll put a link to, to Luria's, uh, show in the show notes. But what I would say in general, from an overall technical point of view, what's happening is obviously you're capturing the video on your machine. It's getting compressed in some way. It's getting sent to Facebook in a stream Facebook is doing the magic that they do to replicate it out on their CDN. And then they're buffering it in the app because they want users to have a, an experience in the app that doesn't show a lot of choppy video. So based on the connection between you, where you are streaming live and where the video is ending up in New Zealand or wherever, they're making a decision about how much video to buffer probably dynamically. And that's where a lot of the video buffering has come from. So I would say, you know, 20 seconds of video buffering, and sometimes I've heard reports of as high as a minute or two, is inherent in this sort of video streaming technology in 2016, 2017 technology terms. You're not going to be able to get around that just by reasons of physics and how long it takes to transmit data around the world. 
However, the, this, this doesn't change the fact Phil's point is, man, it makes it really hard to deal with like comments because I'm saying something kind of like I am right now. And then I finished my point and moved on to the next thing. And then I look at the screen and bam, here's comes a comment about what I was just talking about. And I would say uh, two things about that. One is there's not going to be a way to keep that from happening. And some people that are doing this are are using assistance and so forth to kind of help them cue those things up, cue those questions up, manage them, control the flow of the conversation. It still doesn't change the fact that the comment comes in after you've already moved along. I see some people that just don't answer those comments. They go ahead and answer them in the chat later after the show is over. And they say something like, Hey, if I didn't get your comment, I'll be hanging out after the broadcast and I'll be answering comments. So that's, that's one way to do it. Another thing that I see people do a lot of times is they'll come to the broadcast with the the solicit input ahead of time, questions ahead of time, and they'll do a long segment in the front and then they'll allow people the the opportunity to queue up questions while they're doing that long segment, and then they'll handle those. And again, this still doesn't get around Phil's basic issue, but there are ways that you can imagine to structure your live to kind of help with this issue. So I hope that helps a lot, but I, I want to reassure you that it's not possible to do Facebook Live without some amount of delay. I was listening to a live from Amy Porterfield's and I did notice that she was getting delays. She accidentally turned down, turned on the audio on her cell phone, and I was able to detect that she had a delay that was running around four or five, maybe 10 seconds. That's a pretty healthy, uh, shorter delay that you can more easily manage. So maybe the, the technology will improve with bandwidth. But from what I'm hearing, the average is around 20 seconds, and that's something you're going to have to deal with. Hope that helps. This week, in the world of Internet marketing news. Internet marketing news. So in the news this week, I wanted to tell you about some cool things that are going on over at ConvertKit. So December 6th, I guess, um, Nathan went live and announced a bunch of new features that they were releasing for ConvertKit. A lot of them were automation related. A lot of you will remember that I switched from AWeber to ConvertKit because I was interested in this kind of automation. And you can do a lot of things that revolve around tagging your subscribers. And so I have big plans, some of which I've already implemented, about how to identify subscribers that are interested in different things. For example, if you're listening to this podcast and you're a brand new affiliate or internet marketer, there might be one kind of content that you're interested in, you know, some getting started kind of stuff. But if you're someone who's been doing affiliate marketing for seven years, then there's a different kind of content that you're going to be interested in. And so if I can identify you, I can tag you and give you more of the kind of content that's really appropriate to you. ConvertKit's been able to do that for some time at the autoresponder level, and you can tag people. And Nathan introduced a, a bunch of new features that take that to a more considerably more granular level, both in terms of scheduling where you can start to pick the day of the week inside of an autoresponder. You know, normally we would set an autoresponder and we'd say this autoresponder goes out every Monday or it, it can go out on weekdays, but it can't go out on the weekend. This And that applies to the entire series of, of mails. Well, they've brought that down a level and now you can set specific mails in the series to go on particular days. So maybe... You've got three or four emails that can go out any day of the week, but there's one particular email that you only want to go out on Monday inside the series because maybe every Monday you're starting a new course or you've got some onboarding process that starts on Mondays. And so you want to constrain just that email, not the whole series, to go on Monday. So, so basically just taking it up a notch down a level in the hierarchy so you can get finer control over when emails are delivered. This is kind of magical for all the different scenarios that you can envision regarding sales funnels and contests and 
just all the kind of stuff that you do that starts on different days of the week. And it's just a really powerful idea. They've also added in the idea of particular times. So you can start to think about scheduling an autoresponder series where at the end of the autoresponder series, maybe near the time when a cart is closing, you have an email in the morning and then again in the evening on that same day within a pre-programmed series so you can really get your marketing automation to the next level. This is something, at least in my experience, these kinds of advanced features are things that you've had to rely on a very expensive softwares like Infusionsoft um, to do in the past. And, and Nathan's bringing bringing these kind of features down into this price range that's really affordable. So it's super cool. Another thing that's super amazing is this behavior on tags. You can decide in a sequence, in a pre-programmed sequence, that maybe it's a, an autoresponder with 15 emails, but three of them are really heavy sales pitches. Well, you don't want to deliver those to people who have already bought your product. So you can say within a sequence, if someone has a particular tag, we're just going to skip that email because they don't need that email. Again, that's a really powerful idea. And I can imagine, you know, in my internet marketing business, if I had a long, long sequence of emails, some of which were appropriate for all of my audience, some were advanced and some were not advanced topics. They were for beginners. I can imagine skipping the beginner emails or the advanced emails, depending on your tags. There's lots of things you can imagine doing in these kind of scenarios when you have this kind of granular control. Now, you know, this has been true with broadcasts for a while in ConvertKit, but the idea that you can set all this stuff up in, in advance and run your business on autopilot based on when someone joins your list, incredibly powerful. I think the thing that, that, gets me the most excited about Nathan and the way he's handling this whole thing over at convert kit is they just continue to push it. You know, they, they, they're not stopping. And he mentioned on this broadcast, they've got 10,000 customers now, which is a nice size company and growing very quickly. And uh, I really like convert kit. If you're interested in convert kit, I, I, I can't speak any more highly about an email autoresponder service than those guys. Um, you can check it out at late night. com forward slash convert kit. And, and I will tell you in full transparency, they're not perfect. I mean, they've been working through spam blacklisting issues and deliverability and all these kinds of things that email autoresponders work through. They're normal. They're, they're, they're human in that regard. But gosh, the customer service is just completely transparent and on top of things. And the CEO of the company is in the Facebook group and answering people's questions. I mean, I, I don't know what you can what you can ask for um, that's better than that. So that's in the news. If those are the kind of features that interest you, you can check them out over at latenightim.com forward slash convert kit. And I will also in the show notes put a link to this webinar that the convert kit guys gave last week, this release party webinar. So you can see these features and kind of what I'm talking about. Super cool stuff. I know you're going to love it. It's time to get to work building your internet business. One night at a time. One night at a time. Okay, so the main segment today, I've become inspired by the people over at Ahrefs. Uh, a lot of you know that I use a super cool tool that my buddy Andrew turned me on to a long time ago called Ahrefs, or sometimes you hear people call it A-Hrefs. This is a reference to the HTML code for creating a link inside an HTML page. And the purpose of this service originally was to catalog backlinks and tell you the relative authority of sites, kind of like SEO Moz. We've been using the site for a long time to do analysis on competitor sites and, and so forth. And they do a lot more than that. And you can check them out over at latenightim.com forward slash Ahrefs and the link to that in the show notes as well. So uh, they have this training department, which is kind of impressive. They, they spew out these training videos about how to use the tool. And it's kind of a combination of 
SEO training and um, training about how to use their particular tool. So it's incredibly valuable for people, for the, you know, the people that are their customers. So last week they published this video from their chief educator, Catherine Aragon. I, I don't know her personally, but her videos are really great. And I'll, I'll embed the video that I'm talking about from AHRS in the show notes so you can check it out. It's super educational. Um, but in the video, Catherine is talking about this kind of technique that when I saw her describing this, I thought, wow, I haven't talked about this in a long time. And I bet people either don't know this or maybe they forgot about it or whatever. So I thought I would I would tell you about it. The idea is that there's this low hanging fruit. Catherine calls it low hanging fruit in search engine optimization. And it's kind of an age old principle of engineering. There's stuff that you can work on that matters and, and stuff that doesn't so much. This idea of low hanging fruit, 80, 20 rule, stuff like that. And all of this is this kind of tactic that I'm going to describe to you is based on the fact that your position in the search engine rankings just really absolutely doesn't matter unless you're on the first page. The vast majority of all the traffic that comes from Google comes from the first page because most searchers don't click past the first page. In, in fact, data indicates that well north of 70, 75 percent, depending on whose data you look at, of all the traffic that comes from search engines comes from the first page. And if you can rank in the first position on the first page, you're going to get 30 to 40% of the traffic. And it falls off pretty fast after that. Uh, well, less than 20% for the second spot. And then down, everything under that is down at 10% of the traffic or, or less. And so if you are at the bottom of the first page, you're getting basically very little traffic. You might see for every 100 visitors that that search that term for every 100 searchers in Google that search that term you may see two or three clicks but if you can move to the top of the page you can increase that by a factor of 10 so moving from the bottom of the first page to the top of the first page is an incredibly high leverage activity Moving from page three to page two, that doesn't do you any good. Moving from page 10 to page two doesn't do you any good. But moving from the bottom of page one or the middle of page one to the top of page one can really pay some dividends. So that's the low-hanging fruit. That's where you want to work. So one approach that you can take to instantly get more traffic to your website is go and identify all of the keywords on your website for which you are ranking one through 10. And of those, number one, you're already done. Number two, or maybe number three through 10, you want to do whatever it is that you need to do to move those pages up to the top. Because every notch up that you go from ranking number 10, or maybe you're at the top of page two, ranking and you're ranking number 11 at the top of page two, everything that you do to move up into that sweet spot of rankings one through three or one and two up there can make a huge difference in the amount of traffic that you can get. So that's easy to understand. Let's work on the pages where we're ranking in the top 10, in the bottom of the top 10, three through 10, and let's sort of ignore everything else. So that's, that's the first thing. So then you ask me, well, how do I do that? And again, Catherine, you know, she talks about some things that we've talked about on this show many times. The first thing you want to do, and I think this is, you should be doing this anyway, is figure out, well, what is it about your content that's not as good as your competitor's content? And how can you make your content better? There's lots of reasons you want to update your content and your and with it, your published date. Google likes fresh content. They like to see you update your content. They like long form content. So if you make your post longer, that's going to help you. And when you add more content, you're going to be adding keywords that are related to your content. And so this idea of the semantics of your page, having a greater weight around keywords that are related to the thing you're trying to rank for, all of that improved content is going to help you rank. 
And even if it doesn't help you rank right at this very minute, even if you don't see a change today on that, we know that Google's long-term aim is to rank the best content first. So if you can do something to improve your content over the long haul, you're going to move up from the bottom of page one to the top of page one, and that's what you want to really get high leverage. So make your content better. Now, another way you can get your page to move up from the bottom of page one to the top of page one is to make sure that you're following the 14 critical SEO tips for bloggers that I offered you in episode 109. So maybe your title tag's not quite right, or maybe you aren't using the keyword in your headings in the article, um, things like that that are in that SEO tips for bloggers episode 109 or things you're going to want to check. And don't forget, there is a uh, SEO checklist there, the ultimate blog post SEO checklist that you can download there right in the post that will help you uh, remember what it is that you need to do on every post that you're trying to optimize. And of course, the other thing that you can do and the thing that Ahrefs will tell you about is you can go get backlinks to that content and you can do that by contributing to other people's blogs in the form of guest posts and linking back to the content. You can do that sometimes by leaving incredibly helpful comments in various places like forums and blog comments and linking back with a single link back to that content. Usually the best strategy there is to completely and thoroughly answer the question or add some value with, you know, a hundred or 200 word comment, and then say something like, if you'd like to read more about this, I have a full blown blog blog post on it here so that you're not just spamming someone's website with links back to your website. Things like that are the ways that you're going to want to get backlinks back to your content. And that's going to help you rank. And then of course we know, although it's hard to understand the, uh, the social signals importance, but we know that social signals are of increasing importance. And if you can, you know, you may want to consider re-promoting this piece of content in social media that has this potentially direct effect of tickling whatever social signals are in Google. Again, we don't think they're very strong right now, but we know they're not zero. And it also has the possibility that somebody's going to see that content and choose to link to it on their own. For example, um, I saw this video from Ahrefs and I'm going to link to it because I saw it in social media. And so that's, um, you know, that's the kind of thing that you're looking for is increased backlinks to that content. So you know, one question is, well, how do I know which of my pages are linking are ranking in the top 10 on page one? How do I know what their position is? There's lots of ways to know that. Most keyword tools, the good ones particularly, will have some kind of rank tracking capability built in. Um, in addition to that, uh, tools like Ahrefs and SEO Moz and these other tools that you can use, um, they have this capability. And that's, of course, what this video talks about from the Ahrefs people is how to use this capability that's present inside of Ahrefs. There's also Google Webmaster Tools, which is now called Search Console, will give you some information about what pages are ranking for which keyboard keywords. And of course, you can always check keywords that you know that are important to you manually. Just be sure that you're in an incognito browser and logged out of Google when you do that, because if you don't, your own search history will influence the rankings that you see there in the search engine tool. I will tell you that if you if you do this, eventually you'll tackle the 10 or 15 or 20 or whatever it is pages that you have ranking and you'll wonder what to do next. And I think there's two things to do next. One is create more content because you may be targeting a keyword or two or 10 for your website. But the fact is, if you've got a substantial website, you're ranking for hundreds or thousands of keywords. And when you look at a tool like Ahrefs, you will see an amazing number of keywords that you're ranking for that you had no idea you were ranking for. So create more content that will create more ranking opportunities like the ones that I'm talking about. And then, of course, the other thing that you can do is that you can 
start working on things that are on page two and try to move them to the bottom of page one and repeat the process that I just described because now you've got new keywords ranking in that three to 10 range. And so you can do it all over again. So I hope this helps you. And if you get some results that are interesting, I'd love to hear about it. You can leave me a comment at late night. I am.com forward slash one, one, eight. All right. Well, that does it, and uh, I'm really excited that Christmas is coming. I hope that you are having a fantastic holiday season, as I mentioned at the top of the show, and I will talk to you soon. Ciao. You can do it right when it's late at night. You've been listening to the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. Be sure to visit LateNightPodcast.com today to leave feedback for Mark. Download special bonus content, access the show notes, and more. See you there. Until then. Until then, go and make some great progress on your internet business. One night at a time. One night at a time. Man, I love Christmas, and I love me some Elvis. Santa, bring my baby back to me. Santa, bring my baby back. Whoa, Santa, hear my plea. Santa, bring my baby back to Santa, bring my baby back to me. Santa, bring my baby back. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Late night internet marketing. Hey, it's Mark again. I wanted to tell you one more time about this absolutely free resource that I have for helping people who are trying to get the big picture for internet marketing actually get started and understand what all their choices are. If that's not you, there's no more content. You can skip to the end. But if you're someone who came to this podcast because you're searching for how to get started online and you just can't cut through all the noise, I get it. That was me. In 2007, when I was trying to get started, there were so many people throwing offers at me that I really couldn't even understand what all the different business models were. I couldn't understand how money moved around on the internet, and I couldn't really get a grip on what direction I wanted to go in so I could figure out how to move forward. I've created a free video resource for you just for that purpose at latenightim.com forward slash explain. In several short videos, I just explained to you what internet marketing is all about and what online business is all about and the different options that you have for starting an online business. There's nothing to buy there. You just sign up for access and you get the videos just like that. So if that's interesting to you or if you know someone who's in the same situation, send them that link, latenightim.com forward slash explain. And let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what people are thinking that are in the exact same position that I was in more than a decade ago in 2007. In some ways, it seems like yesterday. And in some ways, it seems like an entire lifetime ago. Again, that's late night. I am.com forward slash explain. Late night internet marketing.